Okay, last one, hopefully on this um, Black Cat JB2000. We are underneath. She's finished up. Um, you know, that's going to run through it before we turn it around and hopefully power, power, fire her up. Um, capacitor bank with the new caps. The bleeders are underneath those. Um, clean that up. Only a couple jumpers uh, used. Um, so I think I got them in pretty nice and neat. Um, that big big resistor there is the surge resistor. It catches the surge when you uh, turn the high voltage on. High voltage delay relay. Um, the high voltage delay uh, is that little yellow can right there. That's a time delay relay. And after um, this one, it only takes like a few seconds. I thought I've seen some that take one or two minutes, but maybe I'm wrong getting old CRS. But um, after the, 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 the you turn it on and the delay kicks in, um, when that's turned on, it turns on the high voltage relay, which turns on the high voltage going to the uh, capacitor bank and the diode bank, uh, which moves out the AC, turns it into DC. Over here is just a um, three position switch for the metering. Um, this one has a uh, volt meter, um, amp meter, and an RF meter, and that just switches it uh, between the, the few of those. Under that heat shrink is a bunch of resistors, and that actually goes to the high voltage, and uh, those resistors read the high voltage they knock that high voltage down from this one runs at uh, 2200 volts 2.2 kilovolts so it knocks it down to about one volt using resistors so the meter can read it without blowing up the meter um, power switch right there I already see at the time delay um, Over to the right, that circuitry uh, would be for a keying circuit. But if you can see, no wires are going to it. Um, so this one does not have an automatic keying circuit where, you know, you key down and RF comes in um, and it keys down. This one does not have it. And another interesting thing on it is this amp does not have a standby switch either. Um, you turn it on. And then it uses a foot switch. You use the foot switch to key it down or not key it down. No standby, no keying circuit there. That's not hooked up even though the component's in. That to the left of that, just a diode and a cap. It takes the um, AC for the filaments and filters that and then sends it over to the relay. So that would be the positive side of the relay over there the can relay and then use the foot switch uh, to ground the negative side of the uh, relay to key up the relay you got your sockets for your 3500 Z's um, in the center this one is center tap but in the center it just has a capacitor uh, going from the input so it is not a tuned input amplifier on this either it just takes it uh, right from the input the drive comes in go through the relay goes to a capacitor and straight into the tubes um, very simple design not a tuned input you can get away with that with a pair of 3500 z's because the input of a 3500 z single is about 100 ohms two of them in a pair is going to be about 50 ohms so you're going to have a halfway decent input um, even without a tuned input but what happens is, as your uh, waveform goes through a cycle, those ohms vary a little bit. Um, even though, you know, the average is 100 ohms for tubes, as the RF goes through its cycles, um, that ohms go up and down, and a tuned input would, like, smooth that out and make the input um, even smoother and better and cleaner. Um, but this amp does not have a tuned input. Um, that's the choke there, the filament choke. And I've said before that uh, chokes let AC, let DC, 
and low power AC like filament 120 Hertz go through so it doesn't and it lets RF can't go through it like blocks RF trying to go through it so the um, AC for the filaments goes through that from the transformer through the greens through the choke and over there to the uh, filaments of the tubes and with 500 Z's grounded grid the filament and the drive come in at the same element at the same place on the tubes so since you got um, the RF and the AC you know meeting together at the tube you want to keep the RF from going back down and into the um, transformer because that will cause all kind of issues if you got the RF leaking so that choke there the filament choke it lets the AC um, low hertz come in for the filament but it blocks the RF from coming back down through it um, and puts it together on the tubes um, over there is your one transformer has the plate high voltage and all that together and down there is your terminal strip for 110 or 220 and that's basically it for a um, black cat JB2000 amp nothing special some of them had the driver tubes um, and then uh, later when the FCC cracked down they um, came out with the 1080 10 through 80 meter and the six meter which was uh, had to drive or two and they could sell that because they say hey look this six meter amp you know work won't, won't work on uh, 10 11 meters uh, but that one you could just mod uh, to get to 10 and 11 meters back so anyway we're gonna try to flip her over carefully do, do, do. and hopefully we ain't knocked nothing out of line do, do, do. Ah taking two hands and that's the top of it disappear 500 Z's with the graphite plates um, those come from China and with the plates that look like that the graphite plates you can actually get more out of them but they're a lot less dependable um, so hey I don't know more outlet a lot less dependable than uh, you know an old EMAC 3500Z so people like the dependable tube so the EMAX basically if you can find them go go for more because that's what people want is the dependability of them um, original uh, open frame type fan um, basically you know that's what they had in the old days um, they don't blow a ton of air don't blow as much air as a newer box fan so what many people do to uh, put some more air on these uh, 500 Z's is they go to a uh, box fan or a muffin fan like that you know that design um, you know uh, blows a lot more air to keep them uh, 500 Z's cooler than um, that original fan does but and then this one's been um, 10 meter modded only that's the four turns I always talk about um, in the tank your tune cap and underneath is your load cap straight through uh, kind of nice and neat other side of your transformer those pieces of wood were original with the do not remove because they were finding with all the weight and the transformer all that the frame would bend pretty easily you know it's not a heavy duty frame with these so the frame would bend so they put those pieces of wood to brace it so they could handle the weight of the transformer and that's about it you got your meter and then I've said that before that choke there is just a safety choke whereas um, that cap there does the opposite of the choke it blocks the um, DC you know coming in the high voltage DC coming in but it lets the RF go through it but if that fails and they do fail they short because you got high voltage and RF going through that um, blocking cap at all times when you're keyed down or high voltage is going through it anytime you got the amp fired up with the high voltage um, 
So anyway, they do fail and they are short. And if they short, you don't want your high voltage to go through the components, out your coax, and and just destroy stuff and maybe kill you. So that choke there is just a safety choke. If that fails and shorts, this will block that DC. You know, I said again, the chokes let the DC go through or the high voltage go through in this case. But this will block it and take it to ground and short it out so it won't get where it's not supposed to be if that fails. This amp will work perfectly fine. You won't see any difference if you take that choke out. It's just like taking a fuse out. You're removing a safety device when you do that. A lot of uh, smaller amps don't have that choke, but I guess they figure the smaller amps, uh, even if it does short, it won't kill you, even though it'll cause some confusion. So anyway, we're turning her on. It goes to high voltage clicking in and it lights up there and then my high voltage meter. It's on voltage now. And it's running about 2300 volts. So this one does have the um, lower voltage transformer which is kind of interesting because I thought the um, ones with the driver tube had the lower voltage and this one did not have the driver tube it was originally a 1080 with all the uh, 10 through 80 meter band stuff in it but anyway I guess Black Hat you know there are many different versions and they use what they had uh, today we're driving it with this little uh, two tube foot warmer one of my favorite little amplifiers and um, we got it set up so the uh, meter on the left is on the 200 watt scale and that's just showing the drive going into the amplifier and then the meter on the right is the output of the uh, JB2000 so that one's on output that one's on input and I guess we've warmed enough up enough oh, by the way hitting my foot switch we're gonna do this first um, if you got a um, amplifier with a voltmeter voltmeter is reading what it's supposed to 2300 volts so we know my volts are good right I'm gonna hit the foot switch and see my volts drop a little bit that's because I'm hitting the switch the relays kicking in it's putting a little bit of a load on them so it's um, pulling a little bit and the voltage drops a little bit shouldn't be a ton of a lot um, but a little bit if everything's working right you got a voltmeter you're reading your volts you key down the um, foot switch or key the amp with no drive it's gonna drop a little bit and then when you key down with RF going in, it should drop even more. Let's see if I could do that. I'm running out of hands here. All right. Key down first with the foot switch. Now keying down the radio. See it drop even more? That's what's supposed to happen. All right. Let's see if we can put it on amps. Okay, now we got it on amps. And the same thing with it out keyed down, you know, uh, with the bias going in. In, you know um, no amps then we key it down like this we should get some amps because it's pulling a little bit we are we have a conducting we've ground this one actually does not have any bias 2200 volts and when you key it down it grounds the uh, the uh, grid no bias no negative 5 negative 10 none of that it's directly grounded um, and that's the amps is pulling just by keying it up with no drive to it right just keying the foot switch and then we gonna quickly uh, try to do a little bit of drive and RF audio audio see that's the amp meter and last we gonna put it on the RF meter this is just a relative RF meter for the um, amplifier audio audio okay um, and I guess to get to the last the nitty-gritty that's just a driver again that's the driver 
And then that's the output on the uh, 2000 watt scale. That one's on peak, I guess. Guess I'm gonna leave it on peak. And now we're gonna key the amplifier. Audio, audio, audio. That's the drive, 200 watt scale. Audio, 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 audio. That's the output. Audio, shh. Hello, hello, hello. Getting about two grand peak watts on a dummy load, no fake watts, right? All right, that's gonna be it for this one. Bye.